Hi everybody, output gaps occur any time where the actual level of output is different from the potential level of output, i.e. it is not equal to the full employment level of output. Let's look at negative output gaps first. A negative output gap occurs any time where actual output is less than the potential level of output. This is also known as a deflationary gap and also known as a recessionary gap because you tend to see this when the economy is suffering from a recession. Let's look at the classical interpretation and a Keynesian interpretation of what a negative output gap would look like. On well, the classical model, let's draw AD and SRAS. So there's SRAS and there is AD. Now where they meet is the actual level of output, right? and that is at Y1 with an inflation level, a price level at P1. But crucially, that output level is going to be less than the potential level of output. So LRAS is going to be to the right of this equilibrium. It's going to be over here somewhere. Okay, so there is LRS and there is YFE. Okay, so the distance, yeah, the difference between Y1 and YFE is the negative output gap or the deflationary gap or the recessionary gap, whatever you want to call it. There it is right there. Actual level of output is less than the potential level of output. What about a Keynesian interpretation? Well, let's draw a Keynesian LRS curve, which will look something like this. Okay, there is YFE, full employment right there. So AD would cut LRAS any point below YFE, so maybe over here. So that's AD, then there is the actual level of output, which is Y1, and there is the price level P1. So again, the difference between Y1 and YFE is the negative output gap, or the deflationary gap, or the recessionary gap. Actual level of output is less than the potential level of output. This is a negative output gap uh, using a Keynesian LRAS diagram. What about a positive output gap? Where a positive output gap occurs where the actual level of output is greater than the potential level of output. Another name for this is an inflationary gap. How would classical economists show it? Well, let's, sh let's show AD and SRAS again. So there is SRAS and there is AD. Okay, and where the two meet, we have the actual level of output, which is Y1, and we have a price level of P1. But crucially now, this output level is going to be greater than the potential level of output. So LRAS, you can draw it over here somewhere. And there is YFE. But you can see that the actual level of output is greater than the potential level of output. How is that possible? Well, remember what we said in previous videos. It is possible for a short period of time for the economy to be producing beyond the full employment level of output because YFE represents the maximum level of output that an economy can produce using all factors of production at sustainable levels. Okay? So it is possible to produce beyond that. Um, we said that the YFE value represents production that is taking place when the labour market is in full equilibrium, i.e. at the natural rate of unemployment. So to produce Y1, maybe we're taking workers out of the natural rate of unemployment. Maybe we are overusing labour, unsustainable use of labour. Maybe we're overusing capital, unsustainable use of capital, to produce Y1. The end result will be an overheating economy with probably very high inflation, hence the term inflationary gap is used as well as a positive output gap. It's very difficult to show it on a Keynesian diagram. In fact, it's impossible to show it perfectly uh, according to this definition on a Keynesian diagram. But in case you wanted to show it, this is how you would do it. So again, a Keynesian LRAS curve, and you would just show aggregate demand right at the top of the vertical part of Keynesian LRS, i.e. right at YFE with a very high uh, price level there. Okay? Now this doesn't fit the definition exactly, I know that, but it would still be accepted by an examiner. This is the only way you can show it, using a Keynesian interpretation here. But if you have to draw a positive output gap in the exam, don't draw the Keynesian version, draw the classical version, where what you're showing clearly fits the definition. This is output gaps. What's very interesting is how you can use the idea of output gaps when it comes to evaluating key ideas in your essays. Let's see how you can do that. Well, let's take an AD shift to the right. Maybe there's been an increase in real disposable income in the economy. When AD shifts to the right, what conclusions do we normally make? Well, we normally say, look, that um, the actual level of growth will increase. We say that because labor is a derived demand, unemployment will decrease. We say that there will be a rise in demand pull inflation and because of that, a worsening of the trade position as exports become less competitive. 
That's normally our conclusions, but we can evaluate that, we can critique that by using output gaps. Now what we can say is, what if there is such a huge negative output gap, maybe the economy is in deep recession, where AD is way down here, yeah, at Y1, price level P1, a huge negative output gap, the difference between Y1 and YFE, actual growth is much less than potential growth. Well, if there is an increase in real disposable income and AD shifts to the right, there is not necessarily going to be an increase in inflation at all. So if AD shifts to the right and we go here to AD2, you can see that, yes, we see the increase in actual growth, yes, we see the fall in unemployment, but we don't see any impact on inflation whatsoever. The price level remains at P1. However, you could say, if the economy was operating at full employment or very close to full employment, and AD were to shift to the right due to a rise in real disposable income, let's say, then you might start to see a conflict. So if AD shifted to AD3, for example, then all right, we get maybe an increase in economic growth, but with that, we see the conflict of higher inflation. And you can say if the economy is at full employment and AD shifts to the right, there'll be no impact on growth, no impact on unemployment, there'll only be inflationary pressure. So you can use output gaps to evaluate that way, you can use the same idea if you're shifting AD left as well. Very useful evaluation when you're talking about the conflict of macroeconomic objectives and whether there will be a conflict or not. Let's do the same thing for LRAS. Well, what conclusions do we make for LRAS? Well, we say that when LRAS shifts to the right, there'll be an increase in both actual and potential growth. Uh, there'll be a fall in unemployment. The natural rate of unemployment will decrease. We say that cost push inflationary pressure will decrease. And with that, exports become more competitive and maybe the trade position in the economy will improve too. We make all of these assumptions, whether you use the classical model to do it, whether you use the Keynesian model to do it, they are the conclusions we generally make. But that doesn't have to be the case, okay? Again, what if there is a huge negative output gap? What if AD is very, very low in the economy? Well, let's take the classical interpretation of that, okay? And let's say that maybe AD is over here, so that's AD, and there's LRAS. And with that, we have a price level P1, and there is YFE1. Well, what if LRAS shifts, but there isn't enough AD in the economy, there isn't enough demand in the economy to make any use of that shift of LRAS? So maybe LRAS shifts over here. Well, AD is not cutting the new LRAS curve, so there is going to be no change at all in the economy. Yeah? So if LRAS shifts without there being any aggregate demand out there in the economy to meet that new uh, level of long-run aggregate supply, there is going to be no change to equilibrium whatsoever in the economy. Yeah? So all of the conclusions we came to are not going to take place. We can show exactly the same thing on a Keynesian LRAS uh, diagram as well. So, you know, there's LRAS there, and there is YFE. But if AD is way down here, let's say, with equilibrium of Y1 and price level P1, what if LRAS shifts to over here, to LRAS2. Again, there isn't enough aggregate demand in the economy in the first place to make any use of that shift. Such a large negative output gap in the first place, whereby this shift of LRAS is redundant. Yeah? In this case, what is needed? Not LRAS shifting policies, like supply-side policies, but demand-side policies, Keynes would argue, are needed to get aggregate demand closer to the full employment level of output. Supply-side policies, in this case, when the economy is in deep recession with a huge negative output gap, are going to be useless. Demand-side policies are the only way in which the economy can grow. So this is how you can use output gaps to evaluate the key conclusions that we come to whenever we shift AD or LRS. Whenever we talk about the impacts on macroeconomic performance, output gaps are always a fantastic evaluation tool for you to use. So, hope that makes sense. Hopefully now you can really nail the essays when you use output gaps. I will catch you all in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.